Hi everyone, welcome to this talk on population study of proboscis monkeys in two islands in South Kalimantan, Indonesia. My name is Elliot James Ong and I'm an environmental studies undergraduate at the National University of Singapore. Um, I'm very pleased to talk to you about this unique animal here today and um, very, very passionate about primates. Um, but before we start, um, let me just introduce a few people that worked on this project. Um, it's quite multinational and um, it involves quite a bit of collaboration. First and foremost, we have Amalia Rizeki and Zainuddin. Um, these are the people that observe these monkeys day in and day out and they worked really hard to collect all the data that we use for our analyses. Um, they both belong to a very um, cool organization that helps to advance the conservation of proboscis monkeys and more on this later. Um, they initially published a paper in Indonesian uh, detailing all the data that we use for this project. So what I helped um, to do was I helped to translate this paper into English and also um, do some further data analyses on group structure and population structure, as well as propose some conservation strategies. Um, and of course, I'm really thankful to my mentors, Dr. Charles Lee and Professor Tim Roberts, both from the University of Newcastle. Dr. Charles Lee is based in Singapore, Professor Tim Roberts is based in Australia, and they both provided very valuable feedback and also advice to guide me along the way. So now onto the subject at hand, more on the proboscis monkey. So this monkey, um, the scientific name is Nasalis larvatus, is one of the largest leaf eating monkeys in the world. So they're pretty big monkeys. They're also endemic to the island of Borneo. Uh, Borneo is the third largest island in the world. Um, it has many endemic species. When we think of endemic species there, we normally think of the Bornean orangutan. Um, we know about the deforestation and palm oil plantation threats that they face, but we also sometimes fail to acknowledge that there are a lot of other species that face the same threats. And one of these is the proboscis monkey. So this monkey is endangered under the IUCN red list um, from a variety of threats. So from deforestation um, to palm oil plantations to human development and, and poaching and hunting. So they're called um, proboscis monkeys because the males have very big bright um, noses which is unusual among um, primates. They also have very big bellies and have very bright colored fur. So as I mentioned, this, this species is endangered and that's why I'm here talking to you today about how we really do need to um, start advancing the conservation of this species. Um, we can't afford to lose them. They're very unique and they're only found in Borneo. Um, so a bit more about where we collected our data. We, all our data is from South Kalimantan. And this photo right here is from a city in South Kalimantan called Banjamasin. And as you can see, it's a huge statue of a proboscis monkey. Um, this monkey is the mascot of South Kalimantan. And as you can see, it's a very um, popular icon here. In the local language, um, they are called Bakantan. Um, yeah, so now a bit more geography. Let's do a quick geography lesson. Where are these islands located? So if you follow my mouse over to the diagram on the left, this square denotes where Indonesia is in the greater Asia Pacific region. We zoom into Indonesia here, which is made up of a lot of different islands. And here is Borneo, this huge chunk here. In the southernmost part of Borneo, we have South Kalimantan. This is a close-up of South Kalimantan. As you can see, there are a lot of rivers and um, water sources that flow through it. One of these is the Barito River. Here is a close-up of the Barito River, where our study sites are located. Churiak and Bakut Island, denoted by these stars here, otherwise known as Pulau Bakut and Pulau Churiak. Pulau is island in uh, Bahasa, Indonesia. So on the right, we have a satellite image of the Barito River. And this here, this chunk here, is Pulau Bakut. Um, Pulau Triak is quite small, so actually you won't be able to see it um, in this photo here. All right, so we've talked about um, our, our research sites, um, but all our researchers um, generally are based out of Pulau Triak Research Station. This is run by Sahabat Bekantan Indonesia in conjunction with Universitas Lambung Mangkura. Now, Sahabat Bekantan Indonesia stands for Friends of the Proboscis Monkey in Indonesia, and it was founded by Amalia. Uh, one of the researchers I mentioned before, and they've done such a great job in conserving the proboscis monkeys here. They rehabilitate injured uh, individuals for release back into the wild. They reforest mangrove areas by planting saplings, and they also do, of course, population monitoring of the two populations um, noted in this study. 
All right, so before I um, head on, I would just like to show you a bit more about Sabah Bekantan and also a bit more about Pulau Bakut. Um, so we're going to watch this video here. Please enjoy. The priority anymore is to Bekantan. The total area is about 18.7 hectares. The island is settled in Barito River and crossed by one of the longest bridges in Indonesia, Barito Bridge. Hi, my name is Amalia Rizky. I'm a biologist in Biodiversitas Indonesia, Lampungangkurat University at Hanyar Masin, South Kalimantan. Now, here I'm in Bakut Island and we have a research about the Kantan population and uh, his feeding. The dominant vegetation is rambai trees or Soneratia cassiolaris. We are observing the Bekantan or proboscis monkey. The scientific name of Bekantan is Nasalis larvatus. Bekantan, an endemic species to Kalimantan, Southeast Asia, inhabits in the mixed deep Tirocarpe forest, mangrove forest, and lowland rain forest near freshwater and rivers. Bekantan or proboscis monkey is called like that because its fur and glacial. Both males and females have large nose. Female noses are not as large, although larger than most monkeys. And juveniles have small upturned noses. The males are... Okay, so I hope you guys have gotten a good look at um, some close shots of the proboscis monkeys so you get to know what they look like a bit more, the ecology, how they move about. So I'm just going to recap some of this um, ecology. And so first and foremost, their habitat. So where do they live? They live in mangroves and coastal areas, but they also live further inland in rainforest areas. So these are the two primary habitats that they live in. What do they eat? They eat mainly plant products, so leaves, seeds, and fruits. And an interesting fact is that they only eat unripe fruits because ripe fruits, uh, sorry, ripe fruits contain high amounts of sugars that they can't digest. So proboscis monkeys actually have um, especially adapted stomach, it's multi-chambered so that they can digest um, plant matter better and they spend a large amount of the day actually resting which shows you how um, tiring or how much energy it takes to actually digest um, plant matter. All right so group structure this is very interesting and I need you guys to remember this for the whole presentation because this is really important. So it's generally accepted that proboscis monkeys live in single male groups so here we have a single male. This is the alpha male, it's a dominated, uh, he's a dominant male, and he's surrounded by multiple females. So you get three females here, uh, actually four, one more here, and then also some juveniles, one here and one here. So group structure is generally one male, multiple females, and multiple juveniles. When the juveniles, when the juvenile males grow up, they actually leave the group. Sometimes um, adult females also will leave the group, um, but that's not as well documented. So now let's head on to the results of this um, survey. Um, oh, and before that, let's just mention that proboscis monkeys have a flexible fission fusion, uh, fission fusion society. So what this means is that um, sometimes different groups will band together. So they'll um, either for sleeping, for safety, or more foraging efficiency. Um, but they'll band together and disperse and band together and disperse at different times. Um, it's not, there's no regular frequency or anything, it's just something people have observed and it hasn't been fully explained as of yet. So when we um, took a look at the group structure on these two islands, on Pulau Bakut, um, you can see there are three groups and something unusual um, basically occurred to us is that there are multiple males in, in all three groups here and also in one group in um, Pulau Churia. There's only one group, which is this alpha group in Pulatria, that obeys this single male um, group structure. Um, and this is unusual. Um, and another thing we looked at is sex ratio. So how many males um, to females? Generally, there should be more females than males. And this is um, seen in all groups, except this one group here in alpha one, where there's two males to one female. So we have a, some explanation for this um, and we think this next slide shows why. Um, we established that multiple males in a group are unusual. That's not generally the accepted um, group structure. 
So some possible explanations. So as I mentioned before, banding, right? Uh, different groups go together. So there might be multiple single male groups in a band. That's why you have multiple males. Um, so maybe at the time of observation, banding was occurring. Um, but the thing with this is that it's not very plausible because group sizes, average um, single male group sizes are within an average of three to 23 individuals. If we look at the largest group here in uh, Pulau Bakut, it's, it's 23. So it's still within uh, the limit for single male group structure. Um, what is more plausible is that the small area of the islands and introduction of other rescued proboscis monkeys has um, led to a very high density of individuals on the island. And this goes for all animals. So when um, animals live in very high densities, they have a tendency to not leave their natal groups, which is groups that they are born in, either because of a lack of territory for them to establish a new group or because it just is more efficient for them to um, stay in a group and it's more convenient for them to forage and find food. The alpha one scenario where we have a weird sex ratio of two males to one female may have resulted as um, a female joining a bachelor group because of the threat of inbreeding. So sometimes females leave groups because of um, the very concentrated genetic pool. So for example, if there isn't enough genetic diversity, um, females might leave to breed with males from a different gene pool. And what we think happened is that these two males in Alpha 1 were a bachelor group. Um, so bachelor groups are basically groups of males that roam around trying to displace alpha males and take over other groups. Um, so this bachelor group was already existing and this female that was leaving another group might have just joined them. So we also looked at population structure. So we looked at the proportion of age classes in both islands. And as you can see, the blue portion shows that the highest proportion goes to adults, which is very unusual um, in a growing population. Actually, it shows a decreasing population trend. But when we kind of analyze the data further, we realize that this might not be the case. <clears throat> So um, we realized that the Pulau Chiriak population was too small to give a good analysis. Um, the Pulau Bakut population, um, on the surface, it shows a decreasing population trend, but we failed to account for introductions of rescued proboscis monkeys who are mainly adults. And this has definitely skewed this uh, natural structure of um, birth and death cycle. So we don't know um, how many of these adults were there originally and how many were introduced. So just um, further monitoring needs to be done to show whether these populations are growing and the birth rates are good. What is um, encouraging is that there still seem to be quite a number of juveniles um, in these groups. And also the sex ratios in all groups um, show that there's high potential for reproduction because there are more females to males. All right, so as I mentioned before, population density is something that is worrying and might be a cause for the weird group structures. Um, and when we did some calculations, we realized that this truly is the case. So in Pulau Bakut, we have 278 individuals per kilometer squared. In Pulau Chiriak, we have 515 individuals per kilometer squared. Of course, this is extrapolated because the islands are so small. Um, the average population density of 2.63 individuals per kilometer squared is from riverine habitats in Sarawak. So as you can see, there's a huge discrepancy in the numbers that we see here. Um, and that definitely, definitely is a cause for concern. Another concern is that these islands also have limited food sources in quantity and variety. So for a healthy population, animals need both good quantity of food and also good variety. Um, in these islands, there are nine mangrove plant species um, versus the average of 37 plant species in other mangrove habitats. So this shows you just how limited it is. The implications for conservation. So this is the most important part. Um, we have shown that group structures could have been impacted by reintroductions and high population densities. But we have also shown that reintroduction programs have been largely successful because the reintroduced ind individuals have uh, reintegrated back into the groups very well, which shows you that Proboscis monkeys are very flexible in accepting new members, which is very, very encouraging. Um, however, uh, we have a reminder that ex situ conservation should only be a last resort. So translocations, reintroduction should be a last resort. Um, in a neighboring area, Pulau Kage, 
um, there was a 40% mortality of translocation. So 40% of the proboscis monkeys that were moved actually died in the process or after they were translocated, which is very, very, very high mortality rate. And we want to avoid that at all costs. So some more threats we also um, highlighted that face these monkeys um, is habitat fragmentation. So loss of connectivity to a wider habitat, which um, might lead to inbreeding as well because you don't have different gene pools mixing, different groups of um, proboscis monkeys mixing. You also have limited um, resources. They can't reach more resources, even though proboscis monkeys are very good swimmers. Um, high water traffic and ecotourism um, also impacts these areas. High water traffic because a lot of goods are shipped down the Barito River and also because Pulau Bakut is an ecotourism area. So we do really do need to look at how much traffic and how many people are allowed into the reserve because this impacts how much um, disturbance the animals have and how much time they um, can spend foraging. The next steps forward. So what we have proposed is we need to do some more long-term monitoring of the group structure and population growth to ascertain whether what we have um, seen and stated is really true. Um, we also need to survey surrounding areas for opportunities to increase connectivity in the long term. This is the most important thing to do if we want these populations to thrive. Um, but in the meantime, we just need to enhance the habitat. So plant more variety of mangrove plants and make sure that um, we manage um, the, the human traffic in the area. All right, so I've come to the end of my presentation. I hope you guys have learned a lot about the proboscis monkey and the threats they face in this particular area. Um, if you would like to help us save the proboscis monkey, visit bakantan.org. This is Sahabat Bakantan's website. There's a load of information on what they do on these proboscis monkeys. And if you're feeling up for it, um, you can make a difference by making a donation. Um, the link is in um, this website. Um, this poster here also shows you some further information. All right. Um, it's been my pleasure to give this talk to you guys. Um, hope to hear some queries from you guys. If there's some time to answer questions and I can make it, um, definitely will would like to entertain some. All right, for now, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much.